Hello everybody, welcome back to Smart Robots Review, the show that reviews robotics and other fantastic tech from around the world and out of this world. And speaking of out of this world, NASA's next mission to the red planet Mars is called InSight and is scheduled to launch tomorrow, May 5th, 4.05 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 7.05 a.m. Eastern Time. This is going to be amazing. INSIGHT stands for Interior Exploration Using Seismic Investigations, Geodesy and Heat Transport. Now this is very exciting for robotics and space exploration for many reasons. But before I get into that, I want to thank my sponsor JLCPCB.com. They are a great company. If you're looking to prototype your own PCBs, check out JLCPCB.com. You can do that for only $2. So check them out. Thank you, JLCPCB, for sponsoring the show. So without any further delay, let me take you on a short 10-minute journey about InSight and why it is so important for robotics and space exploration. The basic idea of InSight is to uh, map out the deep structure of Mars for the very first time. We're going to map out the, the thickness of the crust, uh, the size of the core, uh, the composition of the mantle and core of the planet, sort of get the, uh, the first uh, map of the deep inside of Mars. The InSight mission will be the very first mission to launch from the Vandenberg Air Force Base on the west coast. Typically these launches have always gone from the east coast. Uh, InSight will be the very first mission to robotically deploy instruments from the spacecraft deck to the surface of another planet, this planet Mars. Uh, InSight will also be the very first mission to land and survive for a full Martian year, which is two Mars, two Earth years, uh, with just solar rays. Uh, InSight will also be the very first mission to give Mars a checkup in four and a half billion years. InSight will launch from Vandenberg Air Force Base. After that, InSight goes on a six and a half month cruise to get to Mars. It's on a direct trajectory, so it'll get there pretty quick, about as fast as you can get to Mars. But before we get to Mars, launching on the same rocket is a separate NASA technology experiment known as Mars Cube 1, or MARCO. So NASA expects the plan to go something like this. The rocket reaches orbit, MARCO A, the very first CubeSat, is ejected from the spacecraft, then the rocket rotates itself 180 degrees to eject the second CubeSat, MARCO B. So if you don't know what a CubeSat is, think of it as a very small miniaturized spacecraft. The MARCO spacecraft are basically, in this experiment, communication relays. They're designed to help NASA test new communication and navigation capabilities for future missions and they're hoping Marco will assist in communicating with InSight. It's also important to note that this is the very first test of CubeSat technology in deep space. So once these CubeSats deploy, they're going to follow their own path to Mars behind InSight. Justin Trepto from NASA's Launch Services Program said that these CubeSats are going to be relaying telemetry from the entry, descent, and landing of InSight back to Earth almost in real time. That's exciting. I hope this experiment works. Once we get to Mars, then we go through what we call the entry, descent, and landing, or as we like to say, EDL. We go through that uh, process, which is about seven minutes. We go from about 12,500 miles per hour to zero in 12 minutes, which is incredibly fast. We use a variety of techniques to slow us down as we enter the atmosphere. First, we have uh, an ablative material on our heat shield which protects us from the first part of the atmosphere where we're going the fastest. That slows us down. Uh, we're still at a supersonic speed when we deploy our parachute. The parachute further slows us down. When we get closer to the ground and we start acquiring data from our radar, our landing radar, um, then we know that we can drop the parachute and we can do a propulsive landing down to the surface. And we'll be going about five miles an hour when we uh, touch down on the surface. We've sent a lot of missions to Mars in the past. We've sent rovers, we've sent orbiters, uh, but they, and they've done a lot of really, really great science and a lot of really interesting measurements, but those measurements just scratch the surface of Mars. Uh, we know a lot about the surface of Mars, we know a lot about its atmosphere, and even about its uh, ionosphere, but we don't know very much about what goes on 
a mile below the surface, much less 2,000 miles below the surface down to the center. And this will be the first mission that's, that's going to Mars specifically to, to uh, uh, investigate the huge extent of Mars below the surface. InSight carries a seismometer which measures the seismic waves that have traveled through Mars uh, from, from Mars quakes and maps out the deep interior structure of Mars. It has a heat flow probe that goes down 15 feet and measures the amount of heat coming out of the planet to understand the uh, vigor of its geological engine. And it has a, a radio science experiment which uses the radio on the spacecraft to uh, measure very small variations in the wobble of Mars's pole to understand more about the structure and composition of the core. The primary mission is planned to be one Mars year, which is about two Earth years. However, there's no limitations to our lifetime, so we could last um, as long as we're getting power from the solar rays, um, as long as Mars is behaving itself, we'll be able to survive and we'll continue to get the scientific data back um, that the scientists have been craving for such a long time.